Well, hello. We're outside again because guess what? When the weather permits, we work outside because we have a lot to do. I just recently got home from getting quite a few of my, what I call filler annuals. We're getting to the time of year where it's getting into May where I'm starting to think about what am I gonna plant? Usually in Iowa, Southeast Iowa, I'm zone five. I can start planting outdoors, warm season things around May 12 to May 15. So that's when I start planting a lot of the agave, aloe, a lot of the different succulents that I store over the winter and then bring out for all of summer in the growing season. And since I grow so many of those large statement plants, I like to more use just filler or foliage annuals underneath them that will really kind of set them off, give them something really exciting to shine with, but not compete with them also. So I don't do a lot of blooms as you know, if you follow me, I get made fun of all the time because I'm not huge into blooming annuals. Instead, I choose a lot of, just a lot of foliage annuals because I just think they're so beautiful. So I want to show you, not really a garden haul, not really, not really, but it's the first trip I took to start getting some annuals just to see what I'm looking for and what I'm getting because I think that's fun. So right now I have it all stored in the back of my gator, which is like my roving garden shed during the spring and summer and fall. <laughs> Everything gets stuffed on here, my fertilizers, sometimes my soils, and then lots of plants when I'm driving them around. So when I went recently to the garden center, these are all the things I love to look for. So one of the first things I look for is different types of heliochrysum. So heliochrysum is anything that's a licorice plant. So you can see right here, heliochrysum is what is the more higher name of a plant where licorice is more maybe the common name like what we're used to. But while you might be used to seeing a licorice plant that looks like this, a little bit more sturdy stems, bigger leaves, that soft though silvery foliage, which is what I love, you then can also find different varieties. So I love silver mist. This is also a heliochrysum. And why I like it is it has a little bit of a finer leaf. It has, the foliage is just slightly different. It's not quite as sturdy of stem, so it falls and drapes over an urn or a flower container better. And I just really like the more dainty leaf. I think it's just super pretty. And it's one of my favorites to look for. So after that, you can also even find limelight heliochrysum, which is this beautiful yellowy color. So you've seen my agave. A lot of them have, like the Americana agave I have, have stripes of almost this yellow color that's creamy yellow. And this sets it off so well, but it also can have silvery color where this works really well. So it just kind of depends. Um, I also love even this. I mean, this is Purple Lady. So this is Irsign. I, you know, I'm not gonna say I say all the names right, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is you use what you love. So Purple Lady to me is really fun because it has again, that great foliage and it again works really well for filler. Now, when I say filler, what do I mean? I think we've all probably by now heard the term thriller, filler, and spiller. I don't love that term, but it's what a lot of people use as a container recipe when they're putting one together. So you think of a thriller that goes in the middle of a container. That's maybe a spike, something tall, something with interest. Then you think of the filler that goes around that, that will really fill in the container as it grows. And then you think of the spiller. And that means that's what comes out over the container, maybe drapes down, falls down, gives it something to kind of look at on the way. Now, I don't really think in those terms when I'm planting mine. For one, you see me, mostly what I plant are just thrillers. <laughs> I love tall statement architectural plants. So lots of agave, lots of sharp, fun edges, unique structure. It's just what I gravitate towards and it's what I love. So that's why a lot of these annuals work towards that. And you're gonna see that here. So this purple foliage, you know, I don't always plan ahead and think of all the pots I'm gonna have, but you can tell my tones they go together. So I know I'm gonna have a mixture of things that I can keep putting together. And that's what's fun. And that's what I look for. So a lot of these foliage plants, they're gonna go over to mom's house and also mine. I'll probably need a few more though. Um, but another one I love to look for for foliage, Amethyst Falls Ornamental Oregano, one of my favorites. So you can also find Kent's Beauty. Personally, Amethyst Falls, which right here, is one of my favorites. I think it just, I don't know, it to me does better. And right now it doesn't look that great. You're thinking, okay, Caleb, it's green. What's the big deal? Wait till it grows and wait till it really gets into full sun. It gets some pink tinges on the leaves. It does bloom depending, but the bloom isn't really what I go for. It's the beautiful foliage and it really is something special. It smells like oregano, which I love. It's an ornamental one, so I don't use it to cook with, but my goodness, is it beautiful. Um, considering these aren't normal foliage plants, but something that I do love are smaller succulents. So 
This time of year at greenhouses, you can find smaller starts of string of pearls, and they're really economical compared to what you find them for sometimes as a house plant. And what's fun about them is they do so well outside. They love to be neglected. They love dry, hot conditions. And these just do so well at draping down over hanging pots or plants and just doing something really fun. And so I think that's what's kind of exciting to do. And I'll look for different ones that will do that. So it's not just string of pearls, but you can find different Senecio, which are all in the same family. And they do so well. Some people call different ones like string of bananas and there's string. I mean, there's all the different types and I love to get those. Now, I even will do, let me find it, Lysimachia. I'm not usually a huge Lysimachia fan, but there's some varieties that I really do like. So this is the variegated lemon. I like it because again, it has that bright chartreuse yellow foliage. It can get tinges of like that ambery pink on it, but then the darker leaf centers. And what's nice about this, it can do well in actual some shade or some, you know, full sun. So I just kind of like to have options. So that is always a fun one. But what I'm really focusing on today are my hanging pots. So my front porch has south exposure, so it's pretty much full sun. But I still love the look of ferns. And you would think, well, Kale, you can't do ferns in full sun. Not true. I'm here to break the rules. Kimberly Queen are always the ones I look for. Kimberly Queen can take so much sun, and no joke. For years now, I've been putting these on my front porch, pretty much blasted by the sun all day, and they do gorgeous. I start with smaller ones like this, for one, they're cheaper but also you can't find Kimberly Queen usually in large hanging pots so what I'm doing is loading these up and I thought we would plant them get them ready to go so I have six hanging pots for my front porch and while yes it takes them a little bit of time to grow in my concept when it comes to hanging pots is I don't like to buy ones that are full growing in the spring because then they don't have a lot of places to go and usually by July they don't look good even for blooming ones. I don't like to get them all full out growing in early spring. I actually find it kind of odd that that's what everyone gets. I like to put my own together and let them grow in over the growing season because then they actually have room to grow. So I have my Kimberly Queens there. I might grab some trailing this year and try some trailing plants in there, but I'm also gonna grab with my Espoma organic potting soil, which is all I'm gonna use. I'm gonna also grab some plant tone because I like to mix that in sometimes. These aren't heavy feeders, they don't bloom, but a little bit of organic nutrition is great. Okay, so what I do is I load up my garden cart and I just take it with me so I can have a closer potting, potting area to wherever I wanna plant. So my front porch, you know, is right up here and I wanna plant close to it as I can. Now I am using the same hanging baskets that I have for quite a few years. They are kind of a rattan wicker, so a fake wicker, and they're lined with plastic. The plastic sometimes goes bad, so I will put new plastic in it. This is some of the original, but it does always have holes in the bottom, so it drains. But now what I do is I just fill it with a good organic potting soil. You know that, you know I love it. When I'm planting, especially my like containers, my hanging baskets, I'm always gonna reach for my Espoma organic potting soil. It's all purpose, so it works great for any of the annuals or anything I'm potting up, whether it's my agave and succulents that I keep, or like these ferns I'm gonna plant up right now for my front porch. And then I do sometimes like to mix with it some just plant tone. I think it's a great way to just add some organic fertilizer, mix the two together, and I'm ready to go. So once I have some of the soil in there, I do just add, there's my bud, hey Kip. <laughs> I add some of the plant tone right in. I just think it's a great way to add a little bit of a good organic fertilizer, but not overdo it. Again, ferns don't need a lot, but this just adds a little something extra. So when I'm going to plant one, and you can see here, they pop out super easy. I'm doing this one-handed even. Like, I just, it's, it's easy. You can see they're all ready. Their roots, I mean, look how much they want to grow. So I will break them up just slightly, just to kind of stimulate that root growth. And I don't fill them up with soil at first. I like to more set them in and see what I'm going to need. But now I will continue to put soil around this and I'm going to, this year, I haven't tried this yet, but I'm gonna try some different types of succulents in them because they do have full sun up there and I think these will all do really well. And I think it'll be an interesting mixture with the ferns. I'm kind of excited to try it. So I'm gonna pop in a couple of these, maybe string of pearls. We'll see, maybe the, these are called fish hooks. I don't know, they're just fun, aren't they? So we're gonna try some different ones, see what we think maybe have each of them, I don't know, every two baskets will maybe be different. We'll see, it'll be fun.
So you can see now, I just planted six hanging containers and each of them have some succulents in them that are gonna kind of drape over their stringer pearls, those fish hooks, all different types of senecio, which are super fun. And it is still a little cool. So I'm gonna keep them outside. I planted them early because I want them to start growing, but I may need to pop these in the garage or throw a sheet over them. It's the Midwestern way. We push hard, but I'm gonna set them on my front porch for now. I want them to be outside in the elements as long as it's nice. I'm gonna go grab the rest of them. So here they all are. They're all potted up. They all have a different succulent in them. And now they just need to be watered, honestly. So the watering obviously gets out any air bubbles that will be in them. But the thing is these go on the south side, like I said. So they're gonna have to be watched for water, you know, pretty regularly, especially as we get into more of the heat of the summer. So, you know, during the summer, there are some days where I may have to water these every day. Until it gets really hot, it'll be maybe a couple times a week. It really just depends. But these do really well in full sun, and that's what I'm excited about. For years, I've been loving these. It gives me the look, you know, of to have ferns on the front porch, which is there, is there anything more iconic than that? I, I hardly think so. So I'm gonna water them. And you know, I may, even if the weather outlook looks good, I may actually hang a couple up just because I can. And then if I need to, I can take them down. Now on really windy days, obviously, I also take them down, but you can see, what is better than a hanging container? I know right now it doesn't look like much. I hope this helps you see that you can sometimes think outside the box when it comes to annuals. You don't have to go with the normal ones that we all always see, but you can think more in terms of foliage, more for the foliage color, and kind of think what works for your palette, what works for your yard, because that's really what matters here. It doesn't matter what it looks like everyone is using, it matters what you can. So grab a cart, make a mess, plant something. That's what it's all about. And check my website, wiseguide.com, for recipes, for tips, for tricks. Share this video around, that helps me so much. But I think it also helps other people get excited about gardening because guess what? It's not as hard as it looks. We make mistakes, things die, things grow. In the end, it just makes us happy and that's what matters.